Not many people are familiar with Google Cloud's Cloud Deploy service, but it's an incredibly helpful tool that provides a streamlined DevOps approach to deploying applications to Kubernetes Engine, Anthos, and Cloud Run. Today, we're going to explore this service and show you how to use it through a hands-on tutorial in the Cloud Console. At its core, Cloud Deploy acts like a skilled mechanic for your applications, particularly those that use Docker containers. It transforms your deployment process into a very structured and controlled infrastructure-as-code approach. This means it helps automate and manage your deployments to powerful platforms like Cloud Run and Google Kubernetes Engine, where your applications can perform at their best. When working with Docker containers, you might think about using Docker Hub directly, but today we're taking a different route. We'll be using Google's Artifact Registry, which is like a well-organized storage facility for your Docker images, pre-built libraries, and other important components you need for your applications. For those who are more familiar with Amazon Web Services, or AWS, you'll find some similar services there. AWS has its own container registry for storing Docker images, and AWS Code Pipelines offers comparable functionality for deploying containers. However, today we'll focus on the Google Cloud ecosystem. While Google Cloud Build is another option for deployment, we're choosing to work with Google Cloud Deploy. Both tools are capable of handling your application deployments effectively, but Cloud Deploy offers some unique advantages for our purposes. It's also notably more opinionated than Cloud Build. Let's begin by opening the Google Cloud Deploy dashboard in the console. It's important to note that while the dashboard gives us a good overview, some of its features aren't designed for direct manipulation through the interface. Instead, we'll use what's called an infrastructure as code approach, working through the Google Cloud Shell IDE system to make our changes. The most important elements we'll work with are the Cloud Deploy YAML files. These files serve as our roadmap, defining exactly how we want to deploy our application. The documentation provides excellent quick start guides for setting up these deployments, especially if you're planning to use Cloud Run as your deployment platform. In our demonstration, we're going to set up what's called a delivery pipeline. This pipeline will guide our application through different stages or environments. We'll start with a development or dev environment, which is like a testing ground, and eventually move to the production environment where the actual application will serve real users. A crucial step is making sure our project ID is correctly specified in our deployment targets. Since we're working with Cloud Run in this tutorial, keep in mind that if you're using a different service like Google Kubernetes Engine, your configuration settings will look somewhat different. After we've created our configuration, we'll apply it to generate a delivery pipeline in Cloud Deploy. Once the pipeline is created, we can verify it in the console. You'll see the main application pipeline we just set up, complete with its two stages, dev and production. However, at this point, we haven't actually deployed anything yet. We need to create what's called a release to start the deployment process. For our initial test, we'll use a simple Hello World container and accept the default settings. During this process, you'll notice that Cloud Deploy is automatically generating something called a scaffold configuration. While we can provide our own custom scaffold configuration for the release, for now, we'll let it generate one for us. We'll examine this configuration briefly before moving forward with our straightforward deployment. Interestingly, our first deployment attempt might fail, and that's perfectly normal. The most common reason for this is that the Cloud Run service hasn't been enabled yet. 
If this happens, we'll need to visit the Cloud Run section of the console, where the API will be automatically enabled for us. We don't need to create any additional services at this point. We just need the API to be active. After enabling it, we can retry our deployment. On our second attempt, we should see success. When we click into the deployment task, we can view the successful logs and see our target, a fully deployed Cloud Run service. To make our demo application accessible to everyone, we'll need to make it public. We can do this by granting Cloud Run Invoker permissions to all users. After that, anyone can access the service by clicking its URL, where they'll see our Hello World application running smoothly. With our successful development deployment verified, we can proceed to the production phase. Looking at our pipeline and our release in the dev environment, we'll see an option to promote the deployment to production. When we select this option, Cloud Deploy shows us all the details for the production deployment before we proceed with the promotion. Just as with our development deployment, we expect to see a success status shortly, indicating that our Cloud Run service has been properly deployed as a production service. Once we check our production deployment in Cloud Run, we'll again enable unauthenticated invocations to make testing easier. At this point, we can see our production service running successfully at its own URL, marking a complete rollout through our pipeline. This basic process demonstrates how Cloud Deploy streamlines the deployment of both Cloud Run and Kubernetes services. However, the real power comes from Scaffold's capabilities, which allow for more sophisticated builds and deployments as part of your Cloud Build process. To explore these advanced features, we can copy configurations from the Quick Start Guide and create more detailed deployment specifications. We need to create separate files for each of our Cloud Run services. While these files initially use generic image placeholders, we can override these with our specific configurations. The key to creating a new release is running it from the terminal. We'll create another release using our same delivery pipeline, but specify a different image. For demonstration purposes, we might use something simple like Nginx Latest. This approach gives us much more control over our configuration, allowing us to deploy advanced Cloud Run configurations and take advantage of the native service specification. When Cloud Deploy generates the configuration for us, it only covers the simplest release flow, but when we have a scaffold.yaml file and associated service configurations, we can customize almost anything. However, we might encounter an interesting error at this point, and that's actually a good learning opportunity. The issue relates to port configuration. Cloud Run services expect to use port 8080, but the Nginx container defaults to port 80. We can resolve this by adjusting our configuration, changing both the port and startup probe settings to port 80.
After making these adjustments, we can create a new test release with our updated Cloud Run specifications. When we check our target service after deployment, we should see our Nginx instance running instead of our original application. We can then promote this new configuration to production just as we did with our first deployment. This demonstrates how Cloud Deploy gives you extensive control over your services and pipelines. You can even incorporate container build steps by combining Cloud Deploy configuration with scaffold configuration. The system is flexible enough to handle both simple deployments and complex multi-stage rollouts with sophisticated configurations. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, consider starting a free trial of our new design tool, which is linked in the description, and let us know what you think. Today's diagram file and code will be in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and please enjoy responsibly.